Well, good morning. Wayne here again. And I want to give you a little bit more advice on how I build my round top trunk lid. We've been working on it for several weekends <coughs> and so we'll try to get things wrapped up to a point that you can you can complete the project. But what I want to say is that unfortunately we don't live in a perfect world and so sometimes making your your uh, segments for your round top trunk can be a little bit of a trial and error. So set your your angles up to where you think they should be and run a few things through and then determine if they're going to be a good tight fit. I wish there was a better way to do it. Uh, if we had the machinist tools and whatnot we could do that. But since we're just working in a garage shop situation, we don't have all of the tools that we uh, would like to have. And so here I'm going to give you a little bit of that. Okay, here's the form that I have made for uh, getting my round top uh, segments glued together. You can kind of see what I've got here. Uh, I've got the two ends. And this is all made out of scrap, by the way. Take a piece of uh, MDF or something like that for your bottom. And um, the other main major feature that you need to have is a strip in here where you can um, take a strap like this and hook it. Hope you can see this. Hook it underneath the edge of here like so and then it will go around all of the segments that you have laying on top of here. I believe I bought these uh, straps at um, Harbor Freight. They're really inexpensive and you can ratchet them down as tight as you need to to get things uh, get a good glue job on it. And if, as you notice I've got some some blue tape or green tape sort of color blind. Uh, green tape on top of the contour that we want uh, the, the top to be. Oh, before I forget it, one other thing you need to do is always mark what is the top of your board so that because you have such a slight angle it's really hard to, to determine uh, that you have it right side up. So I've got them all marked on top here so that I know what's going on. I'm just going to lay all of these on here and kind of line them up nice and even. And I'll try to hurry along here. Bring it around. Okay, now just complete putting all of these on here until you have them all in place. And once again, making sure you got them right side up. Just check, double check on yourself every once in a while so that you don't make a mistake. Okay, since we don't live in a perfect world and we're just in a shop situation, garage uh, situation where we don't have all the tools we want, a piece of firewood works pretty good to hold these in place while you put your straps on. And you could also run a piece of tape over top of it if you wanted to. That'll work pretty good too. But what I'm pointing out is you can use just about anything you want to to make this work. So tighten up your strap. Go to the other end. Do the same here. And get your strap arranged here. Straighten that out, it works better. But uh, I would recommend that you put some tape, some masking, or some sort of tape underneath this little metal piece because it tends to uh, cause some stain on the wood. So here we go, we've got everybody tightened up with a screwdriver and we'll use little end wrench here to finish tightening these up 
to where we're satisfied with the way the glue is lining up. Checking all of the, the joints, making sure that every, each segment is laying down tightly on the form. And then let it set overnight until it dries the glue and you're ready to take it off and admire your work. As you can see, it's kind of a mess when you get all that glue on there, but uh, it, let it dry for a couple of hours and then you can take a scraper and scrape that right off. But the main thing is to make sure that there's plenty of glue for each joint. Okay, we're going to let this dry overnight and then we'll take it off and see how it looks. Well, it's time for the unveiling of our project here and see what things look like. Get the straps off to begin with. And we don't need the tape on here anymore. sand this thing down so that you can see the finished product. And here's what the bottom looks like. Of course we're going to have to scrape all the glue and then do some sanding on it. You know I neglected to tell you why I've got tape on top of these forms here. Uh, the obvious reason is that we don't want the glue to stick to our, to our form. So I put the tape on there because the tape or the glue just doesn't stick to masking tape. So it's pretty easy to clean it up after you get done. Just take a sharp chisel, or not a sharp one, but a fairly sharp, and it just pops right off. And you're ready for the next time you want to make a round top trunk. After about, <coughs> oh, 20 or 30 minutes of sanding. I've got this all cleaned up now and we're ready to run it through the table saw and square up the ends. It gets a little tricky right now because how do you run something like that through the table saw without it getting all over the place and not staying square with the blade? Well, what works for me is to crank the blade up as high as you can, take a 2x2, two two, just a piece of junk wood, Put it up against your fence like I've got here. Bring this up against it to where it squares up with the with the fence, so that you have 190 here. And then the idea is that you have to flip the thing over in order to run the other side so it's parallel with these two sides. So this is the way that I figured out it works out for me. So I run this through like so, and I'll cut off the square side, and I mark this side so that I don't lose track of where I am. I take my block of wood away, turn it over like this, and <clears throat> I've measured so that I know the width of my toy box. And then with it sitting against the same side here on the on the fence, I run it through the the table saw one more time and then I have three square sides then I can square up the third side to match up. Things I wanted to mention. Did you notice that when I ran my board through the, the table saw that all of a sudden the saw stopped. Well, I've got something figured out that works really good for me. I've got the switch right here where I can just press my knee up against it and turn the thing off. 
That way I don't have to let go of anything. If I've got a real uh, sensitive piece that I don't want to mess up the end of, then I can just reach over with my, with my knee, turn the power off, and then I can draw the thing back. And that way I'm not going to cause a gouge or anything. When I'm impatient about, you know, waiting for the saw to slow down to stop. The other thing that I'd like to point out is that I wear hearing aids and when I'm running a table saw or anything like that, I have my hearing aids turned off. So uh, I don't hear the saw. Hopefully it's not hurting my ears. Uh, the hearing aids plug the ear canal and so there really isn't very much a uh, problem with noise that way. So if it looks like I'm going to ruin my ears, why I have taken the precaution, uh, even though it doesn't look like I have. Well, what do you think? Doesn't look too bad, does it? I'll turn it over here at the bottom. So there you have it, my method of making a toy box round top lid and if you like the idea, why uh, you can make comments or let me know what you think of it. So for this week, this will be Wayne for What's Up Wayne channel signing off. Try to th think up something interesting for next week. Uh, if you have any ideas of some, some kind of a project you'd like to see done, please let me know. Okay, that's it for this week. Goodbye.